Breaking news tonight, police desperately searching for a beautiful little three-year-old Florida girl, Kelly, after her grandparents report her missing. Little Kelly now not seen for 13 long weeks, last seen with her mother. So why didn't mommy call police? Headlines tonight, mom Casey walks free out of jail after a third arrest and a stunning theory emerges. Did mom Casey Anthony, a person of interest in Kelly's disappearance, have an accomplice. Sources say yes. And tonight, more bombshell audio tapes released of Mom Casey's interrogation by police just after little Kelly reported missing. Lie after lie, her refusal to cooperate, even laughing at times, offering no clues to her own little girl's whereabouts. We hear her lies about the nanny, about the cell phone, about her so-called search for Kaylee. And tonight, did Mom Casey have romances with more than two cops? How will that compromise the case? The investigation leads detectives out of state this as grandmother Cindy Anthony goes on Spanish TV insisting Kaylee's alive and likely in Texas, Puerto Rico or Mexico tonight. Where is Kaylee? Shocking developments in the case of missing three-year-old Florida toddler Kaylee Anthony. A bounty hunter who initially helped get Todd mom Casey Anthony out of jail says he has a theory that Casey Anthony needed help in disposing of her daughter's body. Leonard Padilla believes that Casey Anthony had an accomplice and needed someone to confide in and help her. Anthony remains free on bond as police continue to release more evidence, including the audio of two interviews between police and Casey Anthony, stretching over 90 minutes. That's right. We are taking it apart line by line. Good evening. I'm Nancy Grace. I want to thank you for being with us tonight. The desperate search for a beautiful three-year-old Florida girl, Kelly. More new details emerge in the case of missing three-year-old Kaylee Anthony. Bounty hunter Leonard Padilla, who had previously assisted in getting Casey Anthony out of jail, now has a new theory and believes that an accomplice was possibly helping tot mom Casey Anthony. Padilla says that it is his belief that Anthony needed someone to confine in and tell what really happened and that this person somehow helped Anthony cover up what happened to little Kaylee Marie. We need to stop this lie. Your mother has called me countless times today, okay? And that's why my phone keeps going off. Mm -hmm. Countless times because your mother knows, your father knows, everyone around you knows that you have lied completely and absolutely from the get-go. Everyone knows. Why you're not coming out with it, why you're not telling us the truth, no one has an answer to. The only person that has an answer to that is you. And this is what we're trying to implore upon you. You need to tell us the truth about what happened to Kaylee. It's not that she was with someone and, and he didn't call. Truth. That's not the truth. It is the That's truth. That's not the truth. You need to Absolutely. tell. No, it's not the truth. So we can't get past that unless you go ahead and tell it's us the truth. There's nothing to get past because that is the truth. Straight out to Drew Petromo with WDBO. Drew, what's the latest? Well, the latest, uh, as you've been mentioning, is that this new theory coming from someone very close to the investigation, someone who actually bonded Kay Casey out of jail, uh, bounty hunter Leonard Padilla says that she would have needed a, an accomplice uh, to, to dispose of uh, little Kaylee's body. Um, we've also seen a quote from uh, her friend Christina that said that Casey is the type of person that would be able to connive a friend into, into helping her out. Um, there's also been theories that uh, Casey dumped the body in one of our many alligator infested lakes, specifically Lake Jessup. Um, now investigators say they haven't searched there as of yet, but um, this is one of our most alligator infested uh, lakes and I can tell you just driving over it, you see, uh, you see many alligators uh, swimming out there every time you drive by. We are taking your calls live. Stunning theory develops. Did Casey Anthony have help? an accomplice in the disappearance of little Kaylee. Out to the line, Susan in California. Hi, Susan. Hi, Nancy. I'm a woman. I love your program. Thank you. I know that there's been discussion about whether or not uh, Casey Anthony should have a lie detector test and what that might reveal. But I was wondering if she couldn't fool a lie detector test because she lies with such facility. You know, that's an excellent question. And tonight we have with us Jack Tremarco. 
He is a former FBI polygrapher, the chief of the L.A. Bureau in polygraph for the FBI. Jack, thank you for being with us again. Can you beat a polygraph? Uh, the short answer to that, Nancy, is no. Um, people can be great liars externally, but you have to remember what a polygraph is measuring is physiological response, deviation from your physiology. Things change internally when a person decides to tell a lie, and that can't be masked and it can't be controlled. Are you talking about a heartbeat, uh, perspiration, what? Body temperature? I, I'm talking about a respiratory cycle. When we decide to tell a lie, our breathing changes in a predictable way. We sweat instantly, and our uh, pulse rate might change, but more importantly, blood pressure goes up and comes down all within a five, six, maybe even a seven second window. Tonight with us, Bounty Hunter from California, Leonard Padilla. Your theory is there is an accomplice. That theory is shared not only by you, but one of Kaylee's, one of Casey, mom, Casey Anthony's very best friends. What's your theory and why? Well, the, the situation is that she ran out of gas uh, at the check cashing store on the 26th. Right. And there was a tremendous amount of uh, communication on her phone on the evening of the 26th and uh, also on the 27th when she called uh, her boyfriend to come pick her up that the car had run out of gas and it goes on into the 28th and then it stops it just stops no communication with hardly anybody and the car naturally got towed off on the 30th so there had to be somebody giving her a hand at that time because if you're dealing with if you're dealing with a body and a garbage bag it's like, uh, you know, it's, it's an awful thing to say, but if you talk to a coroner or somebody that's handled uh, cadavers, they'll tell you it's like having 30 pounds of uh, stew in a garbage bag. And if you have a bone breakthrough, it'll, it'll just literally cover the, the, the trunk of the car with fluids. So you basically have to have somebody with you to help you keep somewhat your composure and also to get it over into the dumpster. To Dr. Lawrence Kobolinski, famed forensic scientist, would that explain evidence of human decomposition in the trunk of mom Casey Anthony's car. Nancy, l let me just set the record straight. 30 pounds of feathers or 30 pounds of lead is still 30 pounds. What they call dead weight is still the weight, living or dead. Now the answer to your question is there may be some indicators looking at physical evidence, indicators of decomposition, which would support the theory that there was a dead body in that trunk. That's really the issue. Are the tests reliable? Are they complete? Are there other explanations for finding these things? That's what we have to focus on. Back to bounty hunter Leonard Padilla. You keep talking about the phone records. Have you seen them? Yes, we, uh, we have a uh, complete set of her phone records uh, that go from uh, around the 10th of June all the way out to the end of uh, Where did you get uh, them? July. Uh, we got them from Lee, her brother. Okay. Mr. Padilla, in the sworn search warrant, it states point blank, the so-called phone call that Mom Casey Anthony got from Nanny Zanata Gonzalez where she put little Kelly on the phone right before they hung up. Did that phone call come in? No, no, there's absolutely no record of any such phone call. And we've gone over and over the phone bill and it's just not there. There is no So you have no the phone answer. records right now? You've got On me? No. I don't have them at with your me office, physically. At your office. I've got them at my office, yes. What else did you learn from the phone records? Well, that she's constantly on the phone, constantly, constantly, constantly. The night of the 15th, when uh, we believe she had a big blow up with the family because uh, uh, her mom had come back from uh, the Father's Day and she'd found out that she stole money from uh, the grandparents, uh, I believe at that time is when she left the house, not the following day on the 16th. And that is because the, the phone calls and the pattern of phone calls is such that it doesn't seem like she was making them out of the house. Although the towers that cover the house would also cover uh, a hotel where she might well, have been spotted. Well, if she were in the about. house, she wouldn't be talking to her mother on the cell phone anyway. Well, no, she wasn't talking to her mother. She was talking to her boyfriend and other people. Oh, I see. Okay. So you think she may have been in the house at that time? She might have been, but I think uh, shortly afterwards she left, which would be in conflict somewhat with uh, okay. you know, her having left on the 16th. Did you see any evidence in these phone records, uh, phone calls from or to a nanny? Absolutely none. And, uh, and I can tell you this, that we've gone over every phone call and identified every one of them. 
and there is no Zenaida on there whatsoever, none. Everybody, we are taking your calls live. A stunning theory emerges. Did Mom Casey Anthony have help in getting rid of little Kelly? Also tonight, more of those blockbuster interrogation audio tapes have been released. Uh, to Mike Brooks, weigh in, Mike. You know, I've, I'm, you're putting all these pieces of this timeline together now, Nancy. And, you know, we're, I, if you look back, and even a roommate, Nate, he said that it was on the 15th that she was there, 15th, 16th, during the All-Star game, and it's the 15th that she alleges that she received that call that never happened from Kaylee. 